Today, we're going to talk about Character Does Matter with the Travis Mannion Foundation and Tanya Murphy. Tanya Murphy is the 2023 Navy Spouse of the Year, and I'm so glad to know her. We've actually, our husbands have served at the same commands at the same time, but we didn't know each other because sometimes that's how uh, the Navy life goes, is that it's all in passing, but it's a small, small world. And I'm really happy to bring you today's conversation about character. Let's keep calm and mother on. Mothering is way too important to do alone and way too serious to be serious all the time. My name is Christy Thomas, and I am here shoulder to shoulder with you, mothering and enjoying life together. This is the podcast where you can focus on being mindful and taking a deep breath with me and learning new things so you can pause and savor the amazing life you already have. April is Military Child Appreciation Month. And while military kids are military kids 12 months of the year, not just 11, I want to take one month here at Keep Calm and Mother On and focus on my favorite military kid resources. From my family to yours, thank you for everything you do. Today, we're going to have Tanya Murphy, and she's the Senior Manager of Advancement with the Travis Mannion Foundation. And as of this recording in March of 2023, she is the Navy Branch winner for the Military Spouse of the Year. So thank you, Tanya, for coming on and having a conversation with me. Thank you, Christy, for having me. I'm really excited to be here. So first of all, let's learn a little bit about you. You're a Navy spouse, obviously, with a military armed forces, military insurance contest. We can learn that. But tell us a little bit about your family. Um, so we are a Navy family. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have been. It'll be 20 years this year that my husband has been in the Navy. Um, we have three boys. Uh, they are we have birthday season coming up, so it's always fun to like yeah. the age of, um, almost 11, almost 15, and our oldest is 17. Um, so we've got an elementary kid and two high schoolers. Awesome. How many schools have they been to? How many times have they moved? Oh, man. Okay, so our oldest has been to, I don't know if I've actually counted all of his schools. He has been to, he went to three, ele- nope, four elementary schools, I think, Um two middle schools, and has been really lucky to only have one high school. We actually are geo-batching at this point so that he can finish out at the high school that he's at here in Northern Virginia, uh, just due to life, right? All yeah. Of college So to explain what geo-batching means, right, in case that's a term that people don't know. Okay, so geo-batching. I always forget that, right? We get so used to the terms and the acronyms. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so my husband is a geographic bachelor. He has moved to his next duty station um, when he received his orders, and the boys and I stayed here in Northern Virginia. So we are, our family is living in two separate places right now. Um, in part, like I said, so that my son can yeah. high school here. Uh, when we look at high school graduation, when we look at college applications, you know, there's so, it's so competitive nowadays and there's mm-hmm. so many boxes that kids need to check in order to really have that, that fighting chance at getting to the schools they want to get, get into. Um, and moving him either during his junior year or just before senior year, when we looked at that and considered leadership opportunities, um, participation in sports and uh, band and things like that, mm-hmm. It's such a gamble to move them at that point and, and know whether or not yeah. they're going to settle back in and have those boxes checked that they need checked. And not only that, right? We're talking about academics. We're talking about <laughs> whether their classes that they've been having are going to be continued to be offered in the new place. So it was not a decision we made lightly. Um, yeah. Has definitely had its challenges and it was not solely for my son, right? Uh, we talk about military spouse employment. I have a really great position that I love that while it is remote, it's very beneficial to be in the DC area. Yeah. Um, being in the so, national capital region, right? With- yeah. For access to, you know, partners and events and things like that. And so with all of that in mind, that's how we kind of came to that decision and to this decision. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting ride. It's not one we've done long term before. We've done it for yeah. a few here and there, like when I was finishing grad school and things like that. But um, yeah, it's, Part of the adventure. It sure is. It's in our, it's on our radar too. If the alignment doesn't work out for graduating high school, like it's such a hard choice. It really is. 
And it's something I think that military families are encountering more and more. Again, we've been in this life for like 20 years, you know? So I yeah. remember when he first joined and it was, I would never separate my family. I could never imagine living apart, you know? And that was the common rhetoric that happened mm-hmm. because, you know, we just kept moving. We kept moving the kids and we kept giving up jobs or just not working or, you know, whatever yeah. to make the military life work. And I'm finding more and more, or I'm seeing more and more that yeah. when it comes to my peers and when it comes to, um, and it's not just Navy, it's kind of across the board yep. that spouses and children are saying, you know what, I fully support you and your career and what you're doing, but that does not, that does not negate the importance of what I am doing or the effects of moving. And so more yeah. and more families are making the choice to be geographic bachelors in order to give their kids that stability in order to allow spouses to continue to grow their careers. And I think at some point it's going to be something that DOD has to kind of really look at. The Department of Defense is going to have to consider and look at. Yeah. Because it is affecting families at a, at a higher and higher rate, I think. Absolutely. It, it, it's something that no one takes lightly when they make those choices too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, just the financial cost of it, right? It's, oh, so much. <laughs> right? No, that's, not even, that's not even getting into the emotional challenges and, you know, the uh-huh. logistical challenges of solo parenting, right? For yeah. For an extended period. Um, there's just, yeah, so... It's a ride. It's always a it ride. It is a ride. And I'm glad you're here buckled up next to me because, I mean, the relationships we can make during this ride is what makes it oh, doable yes. to, to live in this looming uncertainty. Yeah. Community is everything, right? Whenever we talk about that, whether that's – and that's something that I really – part of why I love my job, right? Because I get to lean into that community, not just personally, but also professionally, and also help to build that community and build those connections and that network. That makes wherever we are, whatever we're going through, like a place that is home and that we mm-hmm. have support while we're doing it. So, yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the Travis Mannion Foundation. If no one has heard of it before or if you've just seen the really cool logo, because <laughs> it is a really cool logo. Tell us about you. Logo. We have a great logo. Our Spartan head is beautiful. I love all of our swag um, because of our gorgeous Spartan. Um, so I'll say our mission is to empower veterans and families of the fallen to develop character in future generations. What does that actually mean though, right? We can yeah, stop that's a lot of things. words. Yeah. Right. It's words, right? <laughs> what we actually do when we look at that and we break it down to like action, we know that community is one of the strongest parts of our military lifestyles, right? That connection mm-hmm. and that shared that sh- those shared experiences. And whenever you transition out of the military, whether that is because you have retired and you're now a veteran or you've gotten out, whether that is you have lost a family member in service and so you're now a gold star family, that mm-hmm. that connection can be lost in the process. We don't want that to happen. We want to continue to build those communities, right? And not just amongst our military, but also amongst our local civilian, inspired civilians, right? Because right. I don't know about you, but like a place is at home until I've talked to somebody local that tells me about the little hole down on the corner that I never would have found. If I didn't have totally. Time, and it takes right? like nine months to a year for that to happen, right? To pull all those strings and to find the hidden things. Yeah. So what we do is we create these programs, these opportunities for veterans, families of the fallen, inspired civilians, everyone to come together and to build that community. And then with that community, we reach out and we give back, whether that is through our Operation Legacy projects, which are community service projects. Um, okay that are typically Spartan led. We do have like four national engagements that we lead, but there anybody that is a Spartan and you can go to travisbanion.org, join the mission. Everyone can be a Spartan. Um, can look at their community and say, you know, I was out today on a walk and I saw that my local playground's a little bit run down and I'd like to get a service project going. Right. Um, so that's one way to get back. Another way to get back um, is through our character doesn't matter program and our character doesn't matter uh, mentors are veterans and families of the fallen who go into our local communities, school systems, scout groups, sports teams, whatever, mm-hmm. um, and talk to youth about the importance of character, right? And, and what that looks like in our day to day lives. Uh, what better example of that than somebody who has given to our country through their service, through their loss, um, yeah. 
they really understand it, right? We are named in honor of First Lieutenant Travis Mannion. Um, he was a Marine who was killed in action in Iraq in 2007. Um, one of the things that he said to his family before he left was, if not me, then who? Um, and he said it in regards to and to his service, right? To his deployment, right. and, you know, speaking to his training and his ability and his, his need to be there with his fellow Marines. Mm-hmm. Um, but it really resonates through everything that we do. And it's our, it's the ethos that we come back to whenever we're trying to figure out, you know, what's the thing to do. Um, we are led by Travis's sister, Ryan Mannion, and she's phenomenal. And one of the things that she has, I've heard her say that really just hits me every time is that Travis was big in the small things. And because he was big in the small things, it was always easy for him to be big in the big things, right? Um, So just coming back to that moment of, if not me, then who? What is the next right thing? And just continuing to do the next right thing. I love that, being big in the small things. that That's a whole life motto there. Right? That I mean, like that is... As a mother, as a person, as a woman, like that is what I am not only trying to live mm-hmm. for myself, but trying to teach my children, right? Yeah. To get to, to get to be a part of an organization like this, where what we do is built on that, is built on honor, is built on that hard work, is built on that framework and that, and that foundation of giving. Um, I rarely feel like I'm working because I am getting to do something that I love. That's amazing. So it sounds like character does matter is important for everyone to know about, not just if you're active duty, right? Or have an active duty family, which we know is a really small percentage of the country. So it could happen in like a rural school in Pennsylvania or up north in the upper peninsula of the Michigan, right? Like anywhere in the country, if you have a veteran, you can start a character does matter. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the really cool thing about our character does matter program is that we have um, a team that leads the curriculum, and they are, um, right now they're a team of two, but they are growing. Um, and they create this curriculum, and it's based around 24 different character traits. Um, wow. You can go online and take a free assessment. Um, again, join the mission, and it'll link you right through to all of that. Um, and I can even, I'll send you the link to our to the assessment. Yeah, um, I would love that. But it's really cool, because what it does is it takes these 24 character strengths, and it helps you find what your top ones are, right? So for me personally, mine are humor, my top three, because I can never remember my top five. Humor, <laughs> kindness, and teamwork, right? So um, you know me. If, if In times of good, in times of bad, wherever it is, like I'm going to crack a joke, right? Because that's how yep. I'm going to get through that moment, um, bringing levity to things, right? Um, and so when we, but when we look at these 24 strengths, we look at them, we, they discuss with the kids like what they are, give them examples of someone who they know, who's a celebrity, who's someone, you know, an athlete or something that they may know that has demonstrated these traits so that it's tangible to them. And then we talk about how you take those character traits and then pay it forward in your community, right? Whether that's, mm-hmm. through, service, whether that's through helping your friend with their homework, whether that's through speaking up, um, being brave mm-hmm. enough to speak up when you see something going on, right? Um, to really inspire kids and to help them realize that they are one person and one voice, but their character strengths are so important and so strong that when they lean into those and when they really develop those, they can make changes in their environment and in their world, right? Um, we all can do mm-hmm. that. That's that's a thing that... Yeah, you know, is, good or bad without right? knowing it, or but having it labeled helps because what I've found through moving with my own kids and living this crazy lifestyle, right? So often we toss up platitudes about military-associated kids like, oh, they're resilient or, oh, they're so strong or, oh, they're brave and bold, all these words, right? Mm-hmm. But our kids don't actually know what that looks like unless we take the time to label it. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I think is really cool about um, the character strengths that we talk about, right? You name some, right? Bravery and resilience and things like that. But like this assessment also brings in things like love and social uh-huh. intelligence, right? Yeah. The, the skills that we that we really need in order mm-hmm. to really, you know, be a well-rounded, full individual, right? Not just kind of have a shell around us. Because I think sometimes we use resilience as a shield. Mm-hmm. Um, without recognizing that like 
our kids are resilient, but there, there's a cost to that, right? There's a balance to that. And so they need to be resilient, but they also need to be loving and caring, right? They need to be able to have that social intelligence to read their situations and read their surroundings. Yep. Um, and so when we talk about our Character Does Matter program, it does, it, it balances all of those, right? We can address so many different ones. Um, it's cool because it can be a one-time conversation, a presentation, right? Where you, yeah. um, go this was my next question. This is good because yeah, yeah, I was going to say, so what does it look like if you get someone who wants to start one? What is it, yeah. what does it mean to volunteer in this way? All right. So first off, getting started in volunteering is really easy. Like I said, you go to travismanion.org, M-A-N-I-O-N.org, yep. um, and join the mission. And that'll get you connected to all of our resources. We have a whole, we call it our Spartan Development Center online, um, where you can get plugged in and you can do your assessment and you can start learning. Um, but it also allows you to say, like, I'd like to be a mentor. I'd like to be a mentor to children. I'd like to learn about the Character Death Matter program. Um, and that'll get you connected to our youth engagement team and they'll get you trained up in all of it. They'll tell you the things awesome. you do. they'll help you build their, your presentation. They'll help you figure out how you can do this. And it's a program that can be, like I said, de- delivered as a one-time standalone, like, hey, I, hi, I'm here at a presentation for a month of the military child. Let me talk to you about character. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's good to know. It can be a one-off thing. It can be a one-off thing, or it can be a series of meetings and where you do different character traits, and then you get to do activities that kind of tie into them, right? So you get to build yeah. a stronger connection. One of my favorite things that I've seen done with our with our Character Does Matter program is that a lot of times with like athletes or with sports groups or things, our mentors and our and our team members will bring in integrity, right? So they'll yeah. bring in integrity and they'll do a workout with the kids, right? Because when you're working out, when you're trying to get all those reps in, nobody's counting but you. Right. That you yep. got to do yourself in that moment. Um, and so they bring that in, right. To show that, like, when we talk about character, it's not just the things like, well, I went and, you know, got, walked my neighbor's dog. It's the things like, are you being honest with yourself whenever you're working out? So you're giving yourself as much as you deserve and as much mm-hmm. as you want. Um, and, and just kind of really showing how that it just really integrates and weaves through all of our everyday lives. That is so cool. I love how it's tangible, but it's practical and it's applicable to anyone who's listening to this podcast in the United States. I am sure that your church, your school has someone who has served and you should tell them thank you and tell their family thank you and then get involved in this way because we all need more tools in our tool bucket. Yes. And that, I mean, and it's, you know, that's, you just said it right there. We all need more tools in our tool bucket. Right. And when we talk about character does matter, you know, that's, that's targeted at the kids. Right. Really, really cool is that we have an online, um, an online personal development tool that's targeted at the adult. Um, awesome. it, it's on that same portal when you join the mission and it's called leading with your strengths. And it's like the grown up version of, of character does matter. Right. So you find out where your character strengths are. And then you find out how to utilize them. You talk, we talk about overuse of them and underuse of them and, and how we as individuals, as grownups can really look at our character and making sure that we're paying it forward and making sure that we're bringing our best selves to everywhere that we are. Right. Because like you said, we can all use more tools in our tool belt mm-hmm. and we really work to do that. Right. Because when you have that, when you have that, that sense of meaning and that those relationships, yeah, you can engage with the community, and that's when we get to that point of just overall, not just you know I'm okay, but like I'm thriving. You yeah, know? and we can't thrive all the time. Let's be real. Like, no, we, we can't. Through, right? But we need a community to lean on when we can't thrive, and we need we need those relationships. And that's what I like about this organization too. Right? Is that not only are you if you say, oh, I'm going to do this for the kids, but really you're making yourself better yes. because you're building a bigger, much bigger network. You are. And you're becoming part of our Spartan family, right? Our Spartan family is, I mean, just phenomenal. I I rarely walk away from an opportunity to get to spend time with my coworkers, with our Spartans, with anyone without a smile on my face um, because it is such a strong community and everyone the things that we're doing, you can you can feel the impact, right? You can feel those connections. You can feel that that stream, and it's just really, I don't know. It's it's amazing. It's it's an honor to get to be a part of all of it for sure. 
Well, I am so glad that we got to have this conversation and and spread the net a little bit bigger because there are so many military connected resources that it's hard to find the ones that shine. And the Travis Mannion Foundation just really shines for me. And so I wanted to have a moment with you guys. Well, thank you. Thank you. I will say um, it definitely shines for me as well. As I'm sure you know, I um, just joined the team less than a year ago and it was one of those moments, and it sounds so cheesy. Um, <laughs> I does. love the cheesy moments. I'm here it's for it. It's a cheesy moment. Okay. So I was um, I was actually on a webinar, and I saw someone, a staff member, speaking on the webinar. And I was so moved by not just what she was saying, but how she was saying, the words mm-hmm. that she was using. And the fact that there was an organiza- organization willing to put their name behind what she was saying, because she was speaking to the challenges of being a black woman veteran, right? And that's a tough conversation. And that is a tough conversation. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of tiptoeing around things. And I found that she was not tiptoeing. She was speaking to it. And I was like, I need to know more about an organization that lets you speak that openly and honestly about your experiences, right? While representing them. Um, Yeah. And so I, I went to the website and I was just reading through, you know, the story of the organization and Travis's story. And I literally started crying because I was <sighs> like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Like, I need to be a part of this. And I started as a volunteer. I started as a Spartan. I signed up to be a part of um, it's called the Honor Project. We do it in, on around Memorial Day um, and go out and there's tokens that we put out. Um, we go to military cemeteries across the, across the nation and we put, uh, a token on fallen service members, headstones, uh, wow. families can submit their, fa- their family member's name because we recognize that not everybody gets to go visit their service member, right? On Memorial yep. Day, but we want them remembered and we want them honored. We want their name spoken because we want their legacies to continue. Right. Um, and I got to do that last year at Arlington Cemetery and it was just such an impactful moment to get to I have chills. That. Yeah. Like it's, it's, I mean, it's just phenomenal. And so getting to get paid to be a part of that, I mean, like talk about a dream, right? Like yeah. I just, wanted, I literally was like, I just want to hang out here. I don't know. Like you guys want to pay me. I'll be here all day. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, and so this is really getting to speak to it and getting to share it with people because you're right. There are so many organizations out there doing great work that sometimes Mm -hmm. it's hard to kind of get through it and be like, okay, so wait, what are you doing? And what are you? And, you know, um, so getting to help be the voice that's like, Hey, I don't know if you about, if you know about TMS, you know about Travis Mannion foundation, but let me tell you, um, because we are doing really, really impactful things over here. I can't wait to hear about how Character Does Matter is started by the people who listen to this, because I know someone's going to go contact their school, contact the people in their community, because maybe they didn't serve, but they know someone that did. And that's what really matters, as I can tell you, as a mom to kids that have moved around a bazillion times when I didn't move, just awareness of what character is and what it takes to be a military kid or a veterans kid or a reservist kid. All of that is is hard to talk about. Mm -hmm. And so I love that we can talk about it in things like character and how to bring that strength based approach to life. Yeah. And you, I mean, you said it right there, right? That the not having the lived experience, it's so different because while I have lived 20 years of this life as a spouse, I didn't grow up as a military kid, right? Me either. Uh, I grew up, I grew up in the same place. And it's funny, my aunt and uncle or my uncle served in the air force. And so I remember hearing my aunt talk about the commissary and base and things like that growing up. And I was like, this sounds like a magical land. I don't know anything about this, you know? Um, and then, and then when my husband and I got married and, you know, all of a sudden I was like, Oh, we got to go to the commissary. Okay. Okay. All right. You know, and, but that's just what my kids know. Yeah. That's, that's all they know. And so when they get to make connections with other people who grew up as military kids and so can identify with them mm-hmm. and share them, it's like, Hey, I remember when my parents were doing that. Yep. This is the end stage, you know, or when they, I remember even yesterday, um, I was picking my youngest up because while we live in Northern Virginia and it's a very heavily, you know, military area, 
he actually goes to a school that's not our neighborhood school. And so there's not a lot of military kids in it because yeah. it's a program where you have to kind of get in and stay in. Mm-hmm. Um, and he had made a new friend and I was standing there and this other mom was like, I think I saw you at the commissary. And I was like, you saw me at the commissary. Are you sure? It was probably me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And come to find out, um, and it's really funny because it was an army commissary actually that we were at. Yeah. But they're another Navy family. And there was just this instant bond that happens, right? Whenever yep. you find community where we exchange numbers and she was like, Hey, if you need me to grab your kid sometime, let me know. Like, I'm Oh, I'm automatically on your emergency form. Yeah. Right. You know, (laughs) she's like, I know you're soloing it. So if you need help, let me know. Um, and my son was like, Oh, your dad's military. My dad's military. You know, there was just this instant connection that happens because they do understand one another in a way that you can't, if you have not moved if you have not had that experience of having to have your parent leave for you know months and things like that so yeah yeah it's a it's a very military kids are really really special and that's not just because I have some of my own I think they all are really phenomenal um so I love getting to support them in in whatever ways that I can and I'm grateful you do because you're you're very passionate and you have a lot of skills you bring to the table from your lived experience and your education. <laughs> But I have a question for you, Tanya. How are you taking care of yourself in this moment? What does your self-care look like? Oh, Christy, you are, you, that's a very good question. (laughs) Um, I actually found that, um, and the reason I say that's a good question is because in the last few weeks, I really, it came to light that I I wasn't, that I wasn't taking care of myself, right? Mm -hmm. I was giving and giving and pouring and pouring and I was spread really thin and I, it hit me hard. Um, and so I had to take a step back and say, and remind myself because I have a background in mental health, right? So I'm quick to tell others, you can't pour from an empty cup. You have to take care of yourself, mm-hmm. you have to give yourself space. Like Put I on know your oxygen how- mask, all the cliches, yeah, right? Right. I know all of the right things to do, but when it came to me, I wasn't doing them. And so I've had to really create that space in that time in my life, in my, in my day to day. So I work out, I either go for walks. Everybody jokes. That I go for like these like really crazy meandering walks. I laugh about it. And then I looked yesterday and realized I'd gone for like a four and a half mile walk, just like Bravo. wandering. Yeah. Um, because that, that, that soothes my mind, right? That mm-hmm. sunlight that moment, that fresh air. Um, I hop on the Peloton and I ride it out. Um, I lift weights, you know, I do yep. whatever I can in order to, move my body and soothe my mind um, mm-hmm. because that's how I have that's that's yeah the I motion changes the motion connection exactly exactly um and also I am working on being more intentional about finding the time and space to connect with others like I said I am solo parenting um during the week and most weekends it can be really isolating mm-hmm. but you're busy, you almost don't even realize how isolated you've become, right? Absolutely. That has been mm-hmm. my lived experience in, we haven't done yeah. geo-batching, but just in deployments, right? Like you get in your circle and... And you just go. You put yep. your blinders on and you just go. You just have um, to survive it. Yeah. And so I found that when I'm head down, just surviving, um, that's not actually surviving. And so I've I had to be really more intentional about reaching out to friends and be like, Hey, what are you doing? You want to go for a walk? You want to grab a drink? You want to like, just talk to me for a few minutes. Cause I realized I haven't talked to another adult today. And I, <laughs> not, that was not for work. Right. Like, right. um, let's just talk about nothing. Um, yeah. What was the last Bravo TV show you watched or the bad novel that you don't want yeah. anyone to know? <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and making that time and that space and giving myself that grace to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. Giving myself that permission to stop um, because that's really hard sometimes to give ourselves permission to just be at rest. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've been working to intentionally do more of that. I'm getting there. Good I'm job. definitely getting there. So, okay. So the next question that I wrap up every episode with is um, how do you have fun as a family? What does it look like to have fun? Oh my gosh. Okay. So this is really funny with the military spouse of the year. 
um, the Navy military salsa figure mm-hmm. thing, we had to do a photo shoot and they had asked, you know, like, well, what do you guys like to do together as a family? And we were like, oh my gosh, I don't know. What do we do as a family? <laughs> as teenagers, right? Right. I, I yeah. feel you on yeah, this. Teenagers, I'm like, Two I'm like, high schoolers in elementary school in my house too. So I feel you. Yeah. So you know the dynamic, right? I'm like, uh-huh. well, we live in their room. So like, I don't know. What do we all like? Yeah. And we kind of sat there and we were joking and, you know, we, my youngest loves to have a game night. Absolutely adores it. Um, we do movie nights a lot um and what's really funny is that my teens will say they don't want to hang out and do movie night which is i'm like okay that's fine i'm not gonna make you right um but i've been re-watching like some of our disney favorites lately because that's a comfort movie and i don't want to have to think right yeah so, like i was watching dusty prop hopper the other night <laughs> playing- <laughs> here we go that's the i am an action movie and i turn around and my 15 year old is in trance and my 17 year old is behind me in trance and i'm like oh okay guys so this is what i have to turn on to get your attention we need to watch some dusty crop hopper because like i mean i'm all for it if that's what gets you to the hang- to hanging out with me yep uh, and they were like well we just haven't seen it in a while you know um so we like to do that we have two dogs and a cat we like to play with our pets together but when it came down to it when we were like really talking about it we're like well what's our really like what do we really enjoy doing together we like trying new restaurants. We like going out to eat together. That's awesome. Yeah, because uh, my kids have very eclectic taste and they're very, um, it's interesting. So like my middle son doesn't like cheese on anything except for pizza. He will like just poo-poo <laughs> it all, but he loves muscles. And I'm like, this is the, you are, you are an interesting character who's like, just give me a bowl full of muscles and I'm happy. But don't give me any cheese. Ugh. It must be those places that you've moved to with this kid where he experienced. Yeah, they're a little bougie. They're a little bougie. Uh, all three of them are a little bit. So, but yeah, <laughs> that, we, that's something we're really enjoying, right? Is finding new foods, new ethnic places, new kind of gastronomic adventures. Um <laughs> to explore together. I love that. Well, thank you. And tell me one more time where people can look up more information about the Travis Mannion Foundation. I know it's going to be on my page of links, but I want to hear it from your mouth one more time. Absolutely. So you can find us at www.travismannion.org. That is T-R-A-V-I-S-M-A-N-I-O-N. And we're also on Facebook. Travis Manion Foundation, and we are on Instagram at Travis Manion awesome. Foundation. Um, and I think we're on Twitter, too. I'm not on Twitter, so that's why I think <laughs> There we go. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. And I hope you have a really great day. Thank you so much, Christy. I'm sorry for my dogs. (laughs) It's okay. A vibe. (laughs) It's all editable. So don't forget, if you see a military connected child, tell them thank you for their service. And you have always been exactly the right mom for your kids. I'm so glad you're here on earth. Please don't forget to go check out Christy Thomas Coaching dot com backslash military. That is where I put all of my resources from the last 16 plus years of raising military connected kids. My favorite, favorite things are there. So don't do this military life alone. If you're listening to this and you're not military connected, please reach out to groups like the Travis Mannion Foundation. They need more volunteers and we need you us military families need you to understand what it's like to to serve and protect from home. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and I hope you have just a good enough day.